Hi, Colin Kirkland is my name from Bermad Water Technologies. The purpose of this video demonstration is to describe how to set the Bermad model 750-80X altitude valve. Before going through the setting procedure, it's important to understand the functionality of the valve. This control valve is designed to allow water to pass through the valve and to fill a ground storage level tank or an elevated storage reservoir. Its function is to basically say when the water is flowing through the valve and the level rises to a high point, we want the valve to close. When that level drops by between half to one meter, we want the valve to open. So how does it do it? Well, we have a double chambered 700 series valve here, which is designed to work in a linear fashion for very high repeatability and reliability. We also have an altitude pilot. Now what the altitude pilot does is it senses through a static sense line the level that the water is inside the tank. How does the valve work? Well, when the level rises to its top water level and that pressure exceeds the tension of the spring, the pilot tells the valve to shut. When that level drops by half to one meter and lower than the tension of the spring, the pilot tells the valve to open. So it's basically an on-off valve controlled by a static level that we sense inside the tank or the reservoir. So, what do we have on the valve first of all before we go through the setting? We have the valve, as explained before, the double chambered 700 series valve, and we have the altitude pilot. Now, there are four different pilots which we use for altitudes setting. This particular one is what we call the M6, and the M6 will regulate the tank level between two to 14 meters. There are three other pilots which are able you to go up to a maximum height of 70 meters. So if I were in the field and I'm coming to set this valve for the first time, there's three different methods which we use to set the valve. What we actually have to achieve to set the valve is to have the reservoir or the tank at its maximum fill level where we want the valve to close. So if we have the sense or the static sense line connected to the reservoir, we fill the reservoir to the high level and we're able to set the valve. The problem with that is it takes quite some time to achieve that because it could be a very large reservoir and that can take time. The second way to set the valve is to remove the sense line and to use a hydraulic bucket pump with an accurate pressure gauge and to bucket pump the pressure up or down and set the pilot to achieve that. But it's not terribly accurate. The third way is what we're doing here in this video demonstration. So what we're doing here is we're attaching the static sense line to an external container of water which is set at a high level. And that could be suspended from the top of the tank or it could just be um, on a platform that you can raise and lower to demonstrate the valve. It's very quick and easy to do, and that's what we're going to do in this uh, test procedure. So, let's now go through the setting procedure to set the valve. Step number one is that we open up the inlet water pressure to apply water through the valve itself. We open up the inlet ball valve which applies water pressure into the valve and we turn the three-way tap which is situated on the bonnet of the valve to the closed position. And what that will do is that will actually close the valve. Now if you're coming to this valve for the first time, there's going to be a small amount of, of air and water mixture in the tube. So slowly we turn the valve to the open position and then to the closed position until such time that we're confident that we've released all the air out of the control chamber. And once that's done, it's now time to set the valve. So, the procedure is as follows. We turn the three-way tap in between the closed and the auto position. It's now time 
to raise the bucket or container to the level where we want the valve to start closing. Now, if you want to be conservative, set it fractionally below that level so that we're being uh, more conservative when we're coming to set the valve. Once we're at that point, it's now time to check the pilot and to see, to, to set it at the correct level to make it close. So, there is a control fitting which comes from port C, which comes around to the auto port. And what we want to do is remove this control tube. So I'm going to remove this control tube now. And we can see that there's no water coming out of the control tube. So because I have the container at the high level, if I turn the adjustment bolt slowly anti-clockwise, when I reach the level of the water in the bucket, water will start coming out through the tube, telling the valve to close. So I'm going to relax the lock nut on the valve. With my spanner, I'm slowly going to turn the pilot anti-clockwise until water comes out of the tube. So here we go. I'm turning it anti-clockwise. And water is starting to come out of the tube. So I'm just going to turn it clockwise a small amount and put the tube back onto the auto port. So now I'm very, very close to the set point where I want the valve to shut. So I simply tighten the nut and I now turn the three-way tap back to the auto port. So it's exactly on line here now. So what we will see now is that the valve will remain closed because I'm at that top water level. Now, what I can demonstrate with the external bucket is that I can drop the bucket by a half to one meter. And when I drop it to that level, we will start to see water coming out of the vent tube and we'll start to see the shaft opening. I can re-lift uh, the unit and see where the, the top water level is reached and I can see the valve closing. So what I'm now going to demonstrate is I'm going to lower and raise the level and subsequently you will see when I hit the low level water coming out through the bottom and the valve opening and conversely when I go back up to the top you'll see the valve close. So I'll just demonstrate that to make sure that's correct now. So now I'm going to lower the level of the bucket and I'm going to see the water vent out through the pilot when it tells the valve to open. And I can see as the level is dropping, I can now start to see the water venting out through the pilot and the indicator shaft opening. So I can see the valve opening. Once it's stopped and it's at the fully open position, I'll just retest it by raising the, sh the level again. And the valve should be starting to shut. And we can see the shaft going down and the valve closing. So what I've demonstrated there is that I've manually been able to see where the valve is closing and I've adjusted the pilot until such time the valve closed and opened. Now the reality is when you then put this online to a reservoir and you connect the sense line, you may have to fine tune the pilot a small amount to achieve the right level. Why is that? Because if it's a very big reservoir where the level rises and falls very slowly, uh, you may just want to fine tune this to get it a little more accurate. If it's a very narrow, tall tank, it may react faster. So by turning the pilot clockwise slowly, will raise the level you want it to shut. By turning it anti-clockwise, it lowers the level that the valve closes. And that's how you set the valve. Now, there's a couple of really important things from the design aspect that are important when you're setting this valve. The sense line which you connect to the tank has to be a static sense line. Now what we mean by that is, do not connect this sense line into the filling pipe work that you're filling the reservoir with because that's a dynamic uh, water flowing and it's not going to be as accurate. So typically the sense line is connected to a static point on the tank or maybe even a scour point on the tank where the water is stationary. That's really important. 
The second thing with the sense line that's important is it doesn't really matter what the diameter of the tubing is that you use because it's just stationary water. But you need to make sure it's protected against damage um, by vehicles or, or people who might break the tube. You also want to make sure that the tube is protected against frost. So if you're in a frost prone region where the temperatures drop close to zero or below, you may want to lag this uh, control tube or put it inside a conduit and make sure that it's fully protected. And that way the static sense line is always accurate because the valve opens and closes based on the pressure that it senses in the tube. Now, there are a couple of options which we have specifically for this valve which are very important to understand. This valve is fitted with the optional indicator stem. Now what the indicator stem does is rises and falls. So visually, you can see the valve opening and closing when it's designed to do its function, and that's useful. Now in some cases, uh, if the valve's in a remote location, you may want to attach a micro switch to the indicator stem, and that gives you an electrical signal to say the valve is closed and the valve is opened. So through telemetry, you can monitor what's happening with the valve when it's opening and closing. The second thing is, is that if you have a dedicated pump that's supplying water through here, sometimes you want to be able to regulate the flow because this valve basically goes from closed to fully opened at a controlled rate. So if you've got a dedicated pump and you want to control the flow, in many instances, we remove the indicator stem and fit this mechanical flow stem. Now what this is is a device which when you turn clockwise or anti-clockwise, it limits the percentage the valve can open. So it's a stopper basically, it's just limiting the travel of the valve and its net effect is it can adjust the amount of flow traveling through the valve. So that's the mechanical flow stem. We can as well, of course, uh, the mechanical flow stem just limits the travel. We can in fact fit a hydraulic pilot to give a function of flow limiting, which basically says, irregardless of inlet pressure, I'm only going to allow the flow to be 10 liters per second, 12 liters per second, or whatever flow you nominate. So that can be flow rate limiting. Another option which you may want to consider is when the valve opens, in many instances, the inlet pressure drops very low. And if there are users or people taking water before this altitude valve, this could have an effect of low pressure. So in many instances, we can fit a hydraulic pilot to give a pressure sustaining function. And what this will do is when the valve opens, it will open, but it will limit the inlet pressure to whatever value you set the sustaining pilot at. So to 20 meters, 25 meters, or however you set it. And that's called pressure sustaining. One of the most critical aspects of any control valve that's filling a reservoir is its effect that it has on the inward pipe, work, uh, the inward, uh, pipe network. We want to ensure that the valve doesn't generate surges. Now, when we use a double chambered valve, it means that the stroke on the valve is linear. So the valve closes at a slow linear rate and it slows down in the last 20%. So inside the valve, if we f what, we, what we find is when the reservoir f comes to the high level, the valve closes. Now should the valve close a little bit too fast, that may generate a little bit of a spike, we can fit a needle valve onto the valve which can control the rate of closing and that will adjust, make the valve close a little slower. Conversely, when the valve opens, we don't want that to happen in a fast mode either, we have an inbuilt needle valve at the bottom here with a flathead screw that we can adjust, which will control the rate that water leaves the bonnet, allowing the valve to open very slowly. And these are fully adjustable options which you can add to the valve. Now importantly, one of the things that we know with water hammer is, water hammer usually happens with a rapid change of flow in the pipe. And because this valve is double chambered and it closes at a linear rate, it's usually unusual that that will occur, unless we've got very high pressures. 
Now, if we fit the optional U-port throttling plug inside the valve body itself, what effect that has is, is that when the valve is closing and we get to the last 20% of its stroke, it slows the flow down very, very slowly. So it's a bit like taking a gate valve and closing at a constant rate, but then slowing down in the last 20%. So the U-port throttling plug is designed to give you very slow closing in the last 20% of closure and opening. Now finally, if you're working with water that uh, may be treated effluent or the water quality is very poor, or if your application was that your valve was in a very remote location and you wanted to minimize the maintenance, one of the things which you can do is fit our large oversized LC filter instead of our standard filter, which will give you a lot more security and reduce the sequence between servicing of the actual valve itself. It's unusual that you're going to need this, but if the water quality was dubious or the valve was in a very remote location, it may be something worth considering. So, there we have it. This is the Bermad model 750-80X altitude valve. If you require any more information such as operation manuals, data sheets, spare parts, go to our website at bermad.com.au or to look at some animations of the valve, why not go to our YouTube channel? Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.